Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 23 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning all about inertial measurement systems using the most excellent Adafruit BNO 055 uh, non-axis sensor. What I will need you to do today is pour yourself a nice big glass of hot coffee. I will need you to get out your gear and I will need you to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. Now this is just a reminder of where we left off in I believe lesson number 21. We had built a virtual simulation using vPython that would mimic in the virtual world whatever was happening with our actual platform in the real world. So as things move in the real world they are tracked in the virtual world. And using quaternions, we were able to come up and get like 90 degree rolls and still be able to do it. So kind of like in any orientation, this thing would continue to work. And so that was very exciting. But then in lesson number 22, what I pointed out was that we are going to move forward by kind of like leaving the virtual world and building a self-leveling platform. And that is what our goal is today. We're going to get the circuit circuit adjustments necessary to get the circuit configured correctly for our future work. We're going to get it hooked up to the servos, talking to the servos, and then we're going to get our physical build uh, done. Okay, and then it'll be in the next lesson, lesson number 24, that we'll actually start coding up the control system to keep the, keep the thing level. And then probably there'll be a lesson after that, like lesson 25, where we really start tweaking and learning a little bit more about control systems. So that's kind of the way I see it going. Hopefully we will meet my goals as far as the things that we are going to do today. Hey, as always, I want to pause and give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. You guys are keeping me in premium coffee beans, and you all should know by now that these videos are fueled by caffeine. So really appreciate the help. You guys that aren't helping yet, think about looking down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and helping a brother out. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and start getting ready to learn today. So I'm going to have to kind of reconfigure my shot where, uh, let's see, I think I want to come over here like this and then get ready for moving to a different shot. Let's see. Okay, I think that is the shot that I want. And then I, I will warn you guys that you know how I struggle with getting this camera to focus. Right now it is on autofocus and if it starts misbehaving we're going to take a second and go over there and give it a stern warning. No, we'll go over there and turn the autofocus off. Okay, so let's see. This is the circuit as we ended up with it in lesson number 21, I believe. And you can see that uh, we have the 5 volts on the Arduino powering up this rail. We have the ground making this top rail ground. And then we are powering the BNO 055 off of the Arduino. And that looks pretty well. And just for the sake of completion, you can see that we have the pin A4 on the Arduino Nano connected up to SDA on the BNO 055. We have the pin A5 on the Arduino connected up to SCL on the BNO 055. And then the BNO 055 has VN connected to this power rail, the 5 volts, and then it has ground to ground. So everything is working just like the way we left it. Okay, but now as we're adding servos, I do not want to try to power those servos and the BNO 055 off of the Arduino Nano. And so the but the, everything does need to have a common ground. So anytime you're doing a circuit like this, you need to keep a common ground. So we're going to keep this Arduino grounded to everything else. So the Arduino is going to be connected to this ground rail. Everything else will be connected to the ground rail. But we don't want to power anything off the Nano. And so what we need to do is come in and disconnect the Nano by removing this little wire here so that the nano is not providing 5 volts to this power rail. So what are we going to power things from? We are going to power things from this little power supply module 
which came with your Elegoo kit, which most of you already have. And if not, in last week's lesson and in the uh, description down below, I gave a link where you can just buy this. I think it's like six bucks or something like that. Now we want to plug it in here and we want to be mindful as we plug it in to get these positive and negative labels and the positive and negative labels to match the labels on the PC board. And the reason that's kind of important is this row, this row here is not positive because it's labeled positive. It's positive because we connect the positive voltage there. And if you connect the ground there, if you reverse these and then connect them up according to the labels, you're going to be in trouble. So if I plug it in like this, I can see that the plus is connected to the, the plus rail, the ground is connected to the ground rail, and similarly down here the plus is this plus rail and the ground is this ground rail. So that all looks very good. The other thing you have to do is make sure that these jumpers right here, that this jumper is connected to the 5 volt pin. Okay, do you see how this little jumper comes off? Okay, do you see how that little jumper comes off? And then you want to make sure that it goes on as such so that it is over that 5 volts. And same thing over here. Now the difference is this time 5 volts is kind of inside. So out there the jumper was on the outside pins. Here the jumper is on the inside two pins. Just as long as we do it correctly. Let's see here. Let me see if that shows. Okay. Like that and then down like that. This was behaving so marvelously. Okay, so there you can see it. Actually, the autofocus does seem to be kind of behaving itself pretty well today. Okay, so there we have uh, we have the power supply. And now the power on these rails is going to come from the power supply. The BNO055 will be powered because it's connected to the plus in the ground. And it will be getting the plus from over here. Okay, you will need in a minute one of these uh, wall wart. It, you know, I gave a link in the description to one that works well, but any wall wart that's like between 6 and 12 volts and has the right plug you can use. So a lot of you could probably just look around in your junk drawer and find one. Otherwise, I think there's one for like 6 bucks in the, in the link. And we will plug that in in a minute, but I don't like to build circuits with things live. And so actually, I probably should unplug the Arduino as well. It's better to build your circuits without things plugged in. I have found over the years, pro tip, okay? So let's see now. What do we need to do now? We need to get focus. Oh man, I just complimented this thing on focusing well. Okay, we'll give it a chance to catch up. There it is. All right, so now what I need you to do is get out a couple of servos. And I think I mentioned uh, initially I had been recommending these MG995s. I'd used a bunch of these things and had great luck. They're really cheap and work really well. But the last couple of batches I got of them didn't work. Half of them didn't work and the half that did work they failed fairly quickly. So I can no longer recommend those. What I loved about them was they were really cheap and worked really well. But we're going to need to go to these more expensive. Uh, they're, they're the exact same size as the other ones but they're the high tech HS-422. Links down in the description down below. Unfortunately, these darn things are a little more expensive. They're about 14 bucks each, but there is nothing more expensive than a cheap servo if you get in the middle of a project and start having, uh, you know, intermittent problems like lack of control or jitteriness and things like that. And so really it's worth putting some money into some good servos. And these things you could use in future projects like I've had these probably five or six or seven years and they're continuing to work really well. So let's go ahead and I would recommend buying the nicer servos. Use the cheaper ones at your own peril or your own risk. Okay, so now let's see if we can start incorporating these two servos into the project. Okay, and do I need to try to come up a little bit? I think I'm going to go to a little bit higher view, and hopefully the camera will continue to behave so that you can see. Okay, you can see this. All right, that looks pretty good, right? Uh, okay, so what we are going to need to do is 
I am going to take a second and turn the autofocus off because I do believe at this point it is not behaving very well. So let me let me have a second here. Come here, here. I think I should be able to do this pretty easily. Okay, I've got a screen now with autofocus. Now I'm going to manually focus on this and then in a minute we can turn the autofocus back on if we need to. Okay, I think that looks good. Doesn't that look like a pretty good focus? Yeah. Okay, so I'll come over here and then bring that shot in. Okay, so now you can see that we have our two our two servos, if I can get things untangled. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can go ahead and get these things hooked up. All right. Now, if you, uh, on, on these some of these other servos where you have uh, brown, red, and orange, brown is ground, red is 5 volts, and orange is control. Well, on these, they're a little bit easier. It's the good old-fashioned red, black, and yellow. And you could imagine red is 5 volts, black is ground, and yellow is control. And so that makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to need to get some of these male-to-male -male pins. And I'm going to put green, because it's dark, is black. Okay, so the green wire is going to be ground. I'll hop on over here and connect it up to ground. Okay, I will try to hook it up to ground. And then I'm going to use a red wire for the power, the 5 volts. And then I'm going to hop over here and put that there. And I missed, I missed the hole, didn't I? Okay, there it goes. And then bring that over here. And then the control, the control pin, the yellow, I'm going to put over here on uh, the digital pin 2. Okay, digital pin 2. And let me make sure, yeah, that looks good. Digital pin 2. Okay. And I am... Okay, so let's go ahead now and try to get that other servo hooked up. And so we are going to use the uh, blue wire as the ground and come on over and connect it to ground. You know what, I really like people that use, like get the wires out ahead of time, like a black wire for black, a red wire for red, a green, a yellow wire for yellow. And you know, if you, if you kind of coordinate your colors like that a little better, it makes it a lot easier to debug on more complicated circuits. But I'm just using what I have handy here and we will have white going into the middle pin the red which will come over to our power and now I need to find a wire I have another yellow wire and yellow will go to the control and this servo I'm going to put over on D3 so digital pin 3 is one servo control and digital pin uh, digital pin 2 is the other one now I'm going to see if I can do a little cable management as best I can so that we can kind of get a good view here of things. Okay, that is looking pretty well. Okay, so now let's think of what we have here. I believe we might just might have this thing all hooked up. So I am going to come over and kind of look things over. Yes, it looks good. And I'm going to bring the power into the Arduino. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring the power and the USB cable into the Arduino and then I am going to bring, if I can, cable management here is becoming indeed a little bit of a challenge. Let me see if I can make it a little easier here. I'm just trying to keep this, this build as clean as I can for you to see. Okay, so you see I've got the, the uh, wall wart to provide the uh, power here. And so I'm going to plug that in. All right. And now I should be able to turn on the sensor. And I should be able to turn on these servos by just turning this on. You notice that this has a little on-off switch. And when it's on, the green, it's down and the green light will come on. And so the green light comes on. And let's see here. Normally you see a little, a little activity. I didn't see anything out of those servos. And so I'm going to check things real carefully here. That's ground. 
that is powered and then this one over here red is red and yellow is over there and ground is ground okay that does in fact look good it looks like everything should be powered up and so a quick look it looks good so what we need to do now is we need to see if we're actually talking to the servos because I'm a little concerned that I didn't hear a little glitchy noise when I turn the things on and so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and call up our Arduino IDE and I think I can do that here if you give me just a second and let's see that still looks good and I need to find a magic shot here for you that looks like a pretty magical shot although I do believe I need to move this over a little bit okay hopefully you can see there what I'm doing with Arduino and now I need to scoot all of this back trying not to damage anything and then I need to get my keyboard okay my dream is someday to have a real studio and a real control room sort of a sidekick in the control room that would help me with all these shots but right now it's just me okay so let's see if we can talk to these servos so I am going to come up here and there is a servo library pre-installed when you uh, install your Arduino IDE so this should already be on your system so you just got to include it in the program so you're going to say include and then what do you want to include you want to include servo uppercase s is important turns the happy little orange the happy little orange indicating it recognizes that and then dot H and then close your brackets and these includes are one of the few times in Arduino that you don't put a trailing semicolon okay so we have our library and now down in our void setup we need to connect to uh, we need uh, or I'm sorry after we uh, after we put the library in we actually need to create the servo object so the library servo we are going to use to create our servo object and so I think I'm just going to call this pan servo okay because we're going to kind of have pan and tilt and so I'm just going to call it the pan servo all right and that one does need a semicolon then we are going to come down here and I think uh, I think we're just going to make this as simple as possible and in the setup in the void setup you need to connect to that servo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say pan servo my pan servo I am going to uh, I'm going to pan servo dot attach and what pin am I going to attach it to pin 2 okay and now let's just do a quick simple command and let's do I think the simplest thing that we can do is just say uh, my or I'm sorry pan servo and then what we want to do is write to it and let's just put it at 90 degrees okay so this would be I think it is going to be this servo should move to 90 degrees if things are working right so what we're trying to do is just see are we talking to the servo so let's come on in here and I need to find my mouse and let's see if we can download this thing it's looking pretty happy oh denied oh pan servo attached does need the semicolon hopefully you guys caught that let's try it again it's looking pretty happy the suspense builds okay so did you guys see that it went to 90 let's go ahead and see if we can talk to the other one and so I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna create another servo and let's call this one tilt servo and then what are we gonna do with tilt servo we need to attach it to pin 3 so I'm gonna say tilt servo we're going to attach to pin 3 okay and then similarly we are going to write that one or, tilt servo we're going to write to it the angle which is going to be 90 okay and now we are going to run that oh what is ah 
Man, I'm not remembering semicolons. You know what? I go over and I start writing a lot of Python, and then I get in the habit of not putting my semicolons in. So let's take a look now. I think this one's going to work. Okay, yeah. Now that wasn't exactly where I was expecting. Let's go back and put them both to zero and see if it looks expected. Okay, so we sh should see them both kind of twist to the left, I think, this time. It did move, so I'm talking to it. Yeah. Okay, so you see the thing is this horn isn't oriented very well. So I'm just going to kind of go ahead and move the horn just uh, because we know that we put the angle zero. So let's set the horn so that when we write zero, we're at zero. Ah. Okay, so now let's come in and let's do 90 again and just make sure that this is working. 90. Okay, that looks good. Download it. I like playing with servos because they're really easy. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, let's do a little bit of coding here. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Okay, and then really it'd be better if I had like a... Uh, uh, pan pin for this and uh, tilt pin for this but I'm just trying to kind of see right now if I can talk to these things so let's do something really simple like let's say for uh, I'm gonna have to set up a variable up here of position pos or uh, int pos position is going to be equal to zero I initialize it and then let's come down here in the loop and say for position from zero and then we want to continue looping as long as position is less than or equal to 180 and then we want to say position each time through the loop is position plus one and so that would be one degree okay we put our open curly to start our four clause and then what we're going to do here is we're going to say uh, pan servo dot write and then what do we want to write we want to write position okay then we need to put a little bit of a delay in here if you try to run these servos too quickly they get confused and so I'm going to try a 15 delay and if that doesn't work we'll tweak it a little bit okay and that looks good and then what do we want to do if we go from 0 to 180 probably what we want to do is come back and then go from 180 back to zero and this time position is position minus one and then that should make this thing run let's just see if this works all right Ooh, the going backwards didn't work very well oh i know why it's, this should be as long as position is greater than or equal to zero. Rookie mistake there. Let's try that again. Boom! Do you see that? That servo is going, and what I like is it's going really smooth. There's no jitter in it. That is really, really going very well. Let's make sure that we can do the other one. And so we're going to take this whole thing and we are going to copy it. And both of those for loops we're going to copy. We're going to paste it. And this time we're going to do tilt servo and tilt servo everything else I think should be the same but now these should go one at a time but do you guys one of the things I hope that you're seeing from me okay the first one went and now the second one's going Okay, and then the first one's going, that is really looking good. Guys, what I hope you see from me is I like to run my code and check things as I go. If you do too much coding before you check it, then what you do is you get somewhere, and then it's such a big mess, it's hard to debug. But we're going to go step by step, little by little, and then that makes things easy. Okay, I think our circuit is ready to go. And what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and, uh, let's see, I need to find something here to look at that I had 
I'm kind of panicking because something that I had sitting here was not sitting here anymore. There it is. Uh, okay, so what I need you guys to do now is I need you to get out your little pan tilt kit that you ordered. And then I need you to, you've got your two servos and you're going to need a couple of screwdrivers and you're going to need a big swig of coffee. And now let's see if we can do our physical assembly. But guys, I used to assemble these pan tilt things. They're kind of tedious to assemble. And I would just do it sort of like trial and error. And I would get it put together and I would find out that these servos weren't oriented correctly and you were getting limited ranges of motion. So I'm going to show you how to get it right the first time. At least I hope we get it right the first time. And the way we are going to do that is we need to go ahead and set these things to the 90 degree position. And so what that means is I'm going to take out all of these four loops, these silly four loops. Okay, I'm going to take those out. And then I'm just going to say uh, pan servo dot right dot right. I'm going to put at 90. Okay, and then tilt servo dot right is going to be at 90. Okay. And you know, these things are going to go from uh, 0 to 180. And so we want to set them at 90 so that when we assemble these things, we know that we're assembling it in the middle of its operational range. And if we assemble it in the middle of the operational range, then we can kind of get things oriented where it will swing about that. And I think it'll make sense after we get going here. So let's go ahead and see if we can get those set to 90 degrees. Okay, so those are at 90 degrees. Even though this one isn't pointing 90, well, that's pointing out that we should take this off and then adjust it to 90. But actually, since we are moving forward with the assembly, I am not going to do that. I'm going to take these things off, and then I've got to get you a better view for watching the magic happen here which I think this is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take these horns off. Okay. I'm going to take these horns off. And then I am going to move the circuit out of the view. And then I am going to set this up. And so this, uh, let's see, let's get this thing where you can see what I am doing. Okay, that looks pretty good. How's our focus? I think our focus is pretty good. So this is going to be the roll servo here. This is going to be the roll servo. And notice it, I set it down and the cord is coming out the left. And I know that this is oriented at the 90 degree position. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my bracket. Okay, I'm going to get out my bracket. And I'm going to have to be very super mindful to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. And so the first bracket piece that we want, the first bracket piece that we want is this one. Okay, notice there's a simple U-shaped bracket and then there's a more complicated bracket. We want this more complicated bracket. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put one of our little wheels. Okay, and I think that I am going to connect the little wheel. Okay, notice the plate is down, right? The plate is down. And I'm going to go ahead first and connect the little wheel to this bracket. Okay, this little wheel to the bracket. And to do that, I am going to need some of these little screws, these little black screws, four to be exact. All right. So now we're going to come this way. Now, at this point, the orientation doesn't matter, but it matters a whole lot when we hook this up to the, it matters a whole lot when we hook these up. Let me take a look at this. Okay, we're going to put it, orient it as such. Okay, make sure you're doing the same orientation as I am so that you get the thing put together where it works the first time. Okay, and then, 
it is oriented as such and then we're going to hook it to the middle set okay so you see there is an upper set a lower set and a middle set of holes we're going to connect it to the middle set and then if we twist this right everything should line up where there should be a little hole Okay, and now is where I need to take a quick look. And actually now, the screws go in from the other side. So now we're going to flip it over. And the screws are going to come from this side. You would not believe these things come without instructions, and they don't even have a picture of what it looks like. And so therefore, you would not believe... The words I used, and I'm not one to use those words, but the words I used when I tried to put this thing together the first time without instructions and without a picture of how the finished thing looks. So we got the first little screw in. We're going to come and put the second little screw in. Man, I love these little magnetic screws and screwdrivers. Makes your life a whole lot easier. Kind of get it tightly. You, know, you want to get it firmly connected there but you don't want to strip your screws. But you do want to really assemble this thing where you're not getting a lot of play in it. Okay, like that. And then one more. Yeah, sometimes you gotta kinda get it started there. One more. Okay, that looks good. Okay, check tightness on all of them. That feels good, good, and good. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put this up as such. You notice that the, uh, let's see, like this, the plate is on the right in those two brackets. These, these two brackets are on the right and the plate is on the left, okay? And now, since this is 90 on roll, we want to align this where the roll would be in the middle. And so you see we want to get like this perfectly up and down, and then we want this perfectly flat, and then we want to plug it in like that. And it takes a little bit of force here. Okay, it takes a little force to get this in. Okay. All right, that is going in. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my screw in there. But do you see how these are orthogonal? This is flat and this is vertical. Okay, and that is looking good. But I am going to go ahead and get another one of these little screws. And then I'm going to pull it down using the screw. The one thing about these high tech, uh, the one thing about these high tech servos is I really, really, really wish they had a metal head on them, which they don't. Okay, and I think I am learning that this screw is not going to go in there. Yeah, it is. You've just got to kind of. You have to uh, you have to kind of force it to get it started. And guys, when I'm turning this, I don't want to turn the bracket, so I'm holding this so that I don't turn the bracket as I'm tightening. Okay, but I want to go ahead and get that pull down on there pretty good. So I'm gonna get that nice and snug. But since that's like plastic or nylon, you don't want to script strip that screw but you see how I pulled that down nicely on there okay so again we're putting uh, for me the cord is coming out the left this uh, big plate is on the left and these two things are on the right all right so now I do believe what I need to do is I do believe what I need to do is get out this other bracket it looks like you guys lost me at some point uh, let me see if I can bring this camera back to life. Uh, 
Okay, I believe I have the camera back to life. Sorry about that. We'll come back. Hopefully I wasn't frozen there for very long, but it looked like the audio was working. So we're going to operate through because I don't want to restart this whole thing. Okay, so let's see here. I think that what I am going to need to do is now connect this bracket to this bracket and you need to look in your little bag of screws and what you need to find here is there is a magic bearing okay that is the bearing and you notice there's a little lip on it so the direction is going to matter of how we put it in there and then there is a long skinny screw okay do you see the long skinny screw and then there should be a small boat bolt I always get nut and bolt mixed up, which is the nut and which is the bolt. Okay, so the small corresponding, I guess that's the nut, is that the nut? Maybe this is the bolt and that's the nut. All you mechanical engineers can yell at me for not knowing this. Okay, but now what I want to do is I want to put the bracket, okay, I'm just going to, do you see the hole in the bracket on the left, the hole in the bracket? Now, I want to slip this down in there, but the wide part needs to be to the outside. I do believe, yes, okay. And then I need to come down to, I need to come down to, do you see I've got a top set and a bottom set? I need to go through that right there. So I need to get this through that hole and what I can see is I'm going to have to drive it through there with a the screwdriver. Okay, that's going to be a tight fit, so we're going to have to drive that through with a screwdriver. Okay, do you see that? And it's just kind of like barely fitting. You're not threading it. It's supposed to be a slip fit, but it's just a little bit of a tight slip fit. And I am not happy with that. I want to, I need to tighten that just a tad bit more. Okay, there. All right, so you see now, looking down, I've got the slip fit there. All right, moving it back to the left. I'm trying to kind of keep this oriented cord to the left. And now that is in there like that. And now this whole thing needs to fit in like this. Now the first time I put this together, I was really worried because there feels like there's a lot of slop here. But that will be taken care of a little bit later. Okay, that will be taken care of a little bit later. That in the end there won't be all this slop. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so you see that I'm going to come through and kind of tighten it with the screwdriver. But the thing is it won't really get tight. You just don't want the nut to fall off. And all this slack is going to be taken, uh, taken away in the next part of the assembly. Okay, so let's see here. I do believe now, now is where I have to really think about the order of assembly. Because if I put this in... Okay, I think that I need to, I think I need to go ahead and put this in like this, okay, and then you can see that those little, this won't fit in like this, you see it won't fit in like this, and so we're going to have to put it like that okay so you see that the servo lip is on the outside of that bracket and then we're going to need to come in with four screws okay four screws to get that on and then in our handy little bag we have the thicker screws or the thicker nuts i hope what is the nut and what is the bolt can you believe i can't remember that I'm going to call these the bolts. All right. Okay, so now 
we are going to put those four in. And the same thing, you're going to have to probably kind of drive them through that the holes in the bracket are supposed to be slip fit, but they're just very tight. But with a screwdriver, you can drive them through, but they're not going to just fall in probably. So we're going to go ahead and get those on. Okay, that, that's going in for me pretty easily. Okay. Okay, that is good. And now we need to do the same thing on these other two. I hope I've been good at letting you guys see what I'm doing here. Okay, that is pretty good. And then we got one more here. Okay, now we've got to put the corresponding nuts on the other side. So I need to get out the four heavier nuts. One, two, three, four. Okay, got the four heavier nuts. And now we are going to put those on and kind of. I like to try to get them all started first and this is one of those things that would be good for a tiny fingered individual. It's kind of hard to get. In fact that's not wanting to spin so I think I'm going to kind of just have to hold it and then try to come in from this side. Yeah and now I can hold it and tighten it with the screwdriver. I was just having problems uh, getting it started by spinning it in that small area. So always want to be real careful and not cross thread your things. And so be mindful of not cross threading. Okay, that one was a little bit tight there, but I think I have that, that. Man, and I hope I don't have to come back and take these off. I think I'm remembering the right order. But I will admit that I have had to disassemble and reassemble these things dozens of times as I didn't do. If you don't do them perfectly, you don't really figure out till you're all the way to the end that you've got a problem or you've kind of painted yourself in a corner. Ah, that hurt. You painted yourself in a corner where you are not able to complete the assembly because you blocked yourself where you can't get to the screw or nut. And so I think that I've done this enough that hopefully I've got this down. Okay, and now we're going to come in with this last one. Last one always seems to be the hardest. Okay. All right, and my darn camera froze up again, didn't it? Let's fix that real quick. I've been having a little problems with my studio. My computer system is getting a little long in the tooth, and a couple of things are freezing up. But when that happens, it's like I just really don't want to go back and start the video again. So you guys are just going to have to kind of live with the camera freezing every once in a while until I can get a better computer system going here. It's just I've got the computer is really fast but I've got so many different cameras and so much stuff it tends to kind of lock up my USBs like I don't have enough USB bandwidth and it kind of locks up at least I figured out more or less usually I can bring the thing back to life. Okay so now the final thing that we're going to need is we are going to need this and it is going to go okay it is going to go on this. Now I don't want to put it on the horn yet. I don't want to put it on the servo yet, but I just want to kind of get it attached to this bracket. Okay, so you see it's lined up and it's on the inside, but it's not on there yet. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put these screws on there. Man, I hate it when I look up and see that my video is locked up and then I don't know how long it's been locked up. And so I really, really would like to buy a new computer and just get one that really has a monster USB bandwidth 
and then a monster uh, you know kind of like processing power because there's a lot of this wire cast is really pretty intense and we have a runaway screw which is not good okay we got the second one on there third one Normally when you lose a screw, you're like over something and it falls down in something that there's no hope that you'll ever get it out. But I think I actually saw where this one went. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we'll get that. Okay. Okay, I believe we've got the camera back here and uh, back to a good view. So the one last thing is we need to now get this uh, get this pressed down on. But what you want to make sure is, is that, again, that uh, we've got to think about the position. The servo is set to 90, and so we want to come up and uh, I hope I set the servo to 90. Yeah, I set the servo to 90. And so if we set it here, this is 90, then this would be 0, this would be 90, and this would be 180. And so that would get a really nice range of motion. So we want this bracket kind of straight up if that makes sense and so I need to come over and I need to now as best I can press okay press this down on the servo there do you see that okay let's see if we can do that I believe we have it started okay and now like before we need to get another one of those little screws and come in and drive that screw in I love these high-tech servos, but I really, really, really wish so much that they had a brass uh, driver coming out instead of that nylon one. So we're going to kind of hold this so that we're not twisting against the servo motor. Okay, and now we're going to tighten that thing down. Okay, I'm going to try to get that pressed on a little better and then try to see if we can get that driven down a little further. And again, the trick is to not strip that. Okay, I am not going to risk anymore. I really wish that were further on there, but that should be a fairly good bite. Okay, so now we have got this thing assembled. All right, and so now I want to just come back to our little program. Do we still have our happy little program view? That one is probably not what we want. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's try that. Okay, so let's come back up here. And I think, in fact, that we deleted that code that we wanted. Let me see if I can get that. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to back this up a little bit and now what I want to do is I want to put those four loops back in so let's see if I can just do an edit undo okay and then edit undo okay that looks like I have them but guys you see I don't want this thing to come all the way back to zero because it's going to run into this and so that is this servo which is connected to D3, uh, to digital pin 3. And I said 3 was tilt. Well, really, I did that backwards. So I'm going to make that 2. And I'm going to make this one. Uh, let's see. That's okay. I'm going to leave it as three right now. We'll be more deliberate later uh, in in our next uh, in our next lesson. Okay, so now we have that set, and so on on the tilt servo, on the tilt servo, I don't want to go that full range because I don't want to run into things. So I am going to say, and I do need my keyboard back over here. Okay. I am going to say that on the tilt, I'm going to go from, let's say, 35 to 180. 
let's say 145. Okay, and then I would likewise need to go 145 to 30 because you really don't want to crash these servos. You can strip the gears and stuff if you if you actually crash them. And so let's go ahead now and let's see what this thing does. Okay, that looks beautiful. Okay, and that looks beautiful. Okay, boom. All right, do you see how smooth that is? So we are talking there, so that's really, really good. So let me see if there is an easy way to stop this. Let's say undo, or let's see. I'm trying to think if I can just, I'm just going to re rerun the program without all this stuff in it. So I will edit and I will comment, uncomment out that. And then I'm going to go back and I am going to say uh, pan servo dot right. I want to put it back in the 90 position. Okay, that looks good. And now let's copy that. Let's paste it. Okay, let's paste it. And then this will be the tilt servo. Okay, and now if I run that, it should put it back in the up position for me. Okay. That really looks good. Okay, so now we need to get this mess affixed to this, okay, as such. All right. Now, you guys are kind of on your own how you want to do this. Okay, you're kind of on your own how you want to get this thing mounted on here. Uh, I think what I am going to do is I'm going to get a little glue by peeling. If you have one of these boards like I do, you can peel this back off and that is sticky. But that is not going to be sticky enough. And so let's see if I have anything here that could help me with this dilemma. You know. If you're wondering why I have trouble finding things, this is what the actual studio looks like. And somewhere here nearby, I recently had a most excellent glue stick. There it is. Okay. So I think what I'm going to try to do, and hopefully this will work, is this has, uh, this has glue on it and then I'm going to put glue on this. What would really be nice is if uh, we had like a 3D printed solution. Okay, uh, a 3D printed solution. But the thing is, it's just then that just opens up a can of worms because you guys don't have, a lot of you don't have 3D printers. You would have to go in and learn Fusion 360. And so I think I would lose a lot of people. And then I'm also going to use this wire to secure it. And so I'm going to start. And you guys, when you put this on here, you want to be very mindful of getting it square. Okay, you want to be very mindful of getting it square. And so let's see if I can get this put back together. And so I'm going to see if I can give you a good view here. That is not the best view. Okay, let's see if we can go back over here without crashing things. Okay. All right, so I am going to try very hard to get this square, and then I am going to affix that, okay? And I am actually going to unplug this cable because it is just slowing me down at this point. I'm going to unplug this cable. Okay, now that is much easier. Now the good news is that kind of feels sticky between the glue stick and the uh, between the glue stick and the uh, sticky bottom of the board that felt pretty sticky. But now I'm going to run a wire through here and I'm going to bring it over 
and then I'm going to try my best. Now the trick is to not break the wire. You don't want to tighten it so much that you break the wire. And I recently had a little pair of pliers to tighten these things. So you're going to have to give me a second to find a suitable pair of pliers. Here they are, right almost very close nearby. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to kind of try to twist it to cinch it down. But again, you don't want to over twist it or what you're going to do is you're going to break the wire. Okay, so that is kind of good. Then I'm going to trim off if I had my other if I had my other pliers, which I don't, so I will just tuck this back out of the way. When I when I get my other pliers, I'm going to trim that excess off. Okay. So now this actually looks kind of good. Okay, so now let's see if I'm going to just try to run this thing again in this position and see if it's going to if it's going to work. I'll need to put my power back on. Okay, that looks happy. And then I will give myself more slack. Okay, so power is back on. And then I'm going to turn the power on to the Arduino. Okay, now let's see if we can get that other program going. Let's see if we can come back to this view here. Not that one. Let's try this one. Okay, so now let's come in and let's get back to that other program where we had those. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. So now let's watch this. Okay, as we download this program and let's see what happens. Let's see if we're actually positioning our platform now. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Okay, I got to keep myself out of the way here. It's not crashing. Okay. You see, we are getting wild and crazy motion with this thing, aren't we? Wild and crazy motion. Okay, that is really good. Okay, now we're not going to be using anywhere near that much motion, but I am going to, un I'm going to turn the power off. That's the other option. I'm just going to turn the power off. Okay, guys, this has been a great lesson. We had a few technical glitches. Guys, I really, man, I am, I'm sorry for those technical glitches, but it really, really, really comes down to not having enough bandwidth on my, uh, on my system to do, uh, to, to do a good job with, uh, with keeping all these cameras running. And so I got to figure out a way to up upgrade this. It's just the, the, normal PCs are pretty pretty inexpensive but you know a more expensive PC that can handle all the USB bandwidth and all the image processing it's probably going to be four or five thousand dollars so I got to figure out a way to figure out a way to swing that okay guys this has been a great lesson so we've got our mechanical build done so next week what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to turn that BNO 055 back on and then we're going to build a simple control loop that will start controlling the position of this thing to keep it flat okay guys Guys, again, really appreciate you all who are helping me out over on Patreon. Think about giving me a thumbs up on this video. That really helps me with the algorithms to do better in YouTube. And then if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to ring the bell so you'll get announcements for when my videos come out. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.